morning and welcome to Vision Life Ministry sponsored by the Uneducated Network. Hope everybody had a great and wonderful Thanksgiving. I know that we did. We love coming together and having family unity. Anyway, with all that being said, today we're going to be speaking in the book of Haggai, starting at chapter 1. Haggai is a prophet of God, and he was sent to go and speak to some people, Zerubbabel and Joshua, because he had heard that the people were saying that it was not yet time to build God's temple. Well, we know that once we give our life to Christ, according to Romans uh, 10 and 9, it says that we confess with our mouth uh, the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that he has risen from the dead, that we shall be saved. Well, once we do that and we accept Christ into our life and we live it on, we need to start building up our temple. And the temple of the Holy Ghost, the, the, the temple resides in us. You know, it's, and how do we go about building up the temple, building us up, building God's a word of God's temple, God's building. Uh, according to Haggai, the people were saying it wasn't yet time to build God's temple, but yet they were building their own homes. They were building their own lives. They were going on, trying to do it all on their own. own. And uh, that wasn't what you know God wanted them to do. God wanted them to see that if they put him first, in everything that they do, that he will begin to make things go stronger and better for them. So in, in the first uh, um, part of that, when he was having that conversation with them, he said, look, God is saying, I want you to consider your ways. He said, consider your ways. Look at what you're doing and you're not profiting anything. He said, you are sowing but yet you're not reaping. You're not reaping the good of the land. Yes, you may be getting a little bit, getting enough to say, oh, yes, I was blessed, but not in the overflow and abundance in which you know that God can do for you. He said, and then the people went on, and he was saying that you're eating, but yet you're not getting full. He said, you know, you're sitting there, and you're, you're going to these different places. You, you know, you're getting the word, but yet you're not. You still have a hunger. Something's still missing. Why, why you still have that yearning in your stomach, you know? Then he goes on to say you're thirsty, but yet not getting full. He said when you're thirsting after something, he said, man cannot fill that void for you. Man cannot fill that void or whatever is missing in your life. But when you are thirsty, he has water that you can drink that you would thirst no more. But you have to build his temple up in order to receive that living water. And then he went on to say, you know, you're clothed, you have clothes on, but yet you're still cold. He said, consider your ways, you're still cold. He said, how, how is it that you put a whole layers of clothing on, but yet you feel nothing, you still feel the air, the, the, uh, the coldness of everybody and everything that's out there. He said, you know, if you're cold, <clears throat> Something is wrong when you got more than one layer of piece of clothing on. And also, he said, if you're working for wages, you go to work every single day. But yet, it's like putting your money in a bag with a hole in it. And that's real. We do that. People, we find ourselves today, we work. And we're working our butts off trying to make things work. But you get it? We are doing this. We're not allowing God to help us. We're not allowing God to show us. We work every single day. We get paid paycheck for paycheck for paycheck. God doesn't want us to. He wants us to live in overflow and abundance. He wants us to have that blessing where we don't have to hardly work for anything, but blessings will just continue to pour into our lives. Brothers and sisters, God is saying to us to consider our ways. Look at your life. Look at what's going on in your life that you are not prospering in the way that you feel you should be prospering. Why is that? Have you ever, ever asked yourself, why is it that I'm not making, you know, a, a progress? Why is it that when it seems like I'm getting good, all of a sudden things just fall back down again? Why is that? You know, consider your ways, he said. Look at what you're doing. You know, the, the word of God says that we put first him Seek ye first, I'm sorry, the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, 
and all these things shall be added unto us. We need to start seeking God. We need to start considering God. When things don't seem to be going right, and I don't care, you can be a Christian and been born again for many, many years, you know, and still stagnated, still in the same position. Then you need to begin to look and examine yourself. Lord, what is it? What is it that I'm doing wrong? You know, did I did I dishonor my brother in, in some kind of way? Did I lie in some kind of way? Did I offend somebody in some kind of way? What is it that I'm doing, Father, that is causing me not to prosper in the way that I know that I should be prospering? This is the questions that we need to start asking ourselves. These are the things that we need to start considering and thinking about. God does not wish, he, he, he wished that we would all prosper and be in good health. You know, if you're, you're battling different things within your home, and yes, we all know, because that's the word of God. We know that trials will come, you know, tribulations will come. We know this, you know, but, it, but with every trial and with every tribulation comes growth. You know, when we go through stuff, it's to, to build us up, it's to make us grow higher and higher in the things of God. So that's why he's saying, consider your ways. You know, because when you're going through diverse temptations and, and we know that the battle has already been won, we know that we already got the victory. We know that we are more than conquerors. We know that we can overcome anything that come in our way because he's already paid the price for us. He already bought us with the price. He's already paid the way for us. You know, he said his word is a, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. He's already given us directions. You know, are we taking heed? Are we considering our ways? Are we looking at our lives and seeing, Lord, what is it? What is it? Well, I, today I want you to begin to look at yourself. Don't look at what Peter done, what Jane done, what Doe done. I don't want you to do that. I want you to look at you. Lord, show me what it is that I need to do. Lord, show me the direction in which you want me to go to. Lord, show me how to achieve this specific goal. Lord, show me how to win these specific souls in. Lord, show me how to uh, go about my Bible and using it as a navigational system. Show me how to do these things so that I can get to where you want me to be. Show me how to do these things. The word of God said, if we just ask, it shall be given unto us. If we knock, the door is going to be open. And if we seek him, we're going to find him. The word of God also, is, also says for us to try him. Try him and see if he don't do it for us. I believe that he will if you just give him that opportunity. You know, things uh, uh, always seem like it's just so, you know, difficult or whatever. And, and I believe that's the way the, the world may be kind of made to make us feel like everything is always so hard. But with Jesus, if we put him first and know, seek his face and wait, be patient, believe that it's going to come to pass. And it will. Sometimes it may not come when we want him. You know, it, it may not happen right then and there. But if we trust and believe in God for everything that we do, we will start beginning to see the manifestations of his word. We will begin to see that when we eat his word, that we will understand his word. You understand when we start sowing into ground that uh, uh, in, in, in Genesis uh, chapter 28, it tells us that it's seed, time, and harvest. So when you sow that seed, you have to give that seed a chance to grow. Give it some time. And when that time pass, then it's going to be time for you to reap that harvest. It's going to be time for you to come back and get it. And that's in whatever it is that we plant. If we plant a good word, that's what we're going to get back, a good word. We plant in finances, that finances is what we're going to get back. You know, if we plant in food, food is what we're going to, emotion, love, joy, peace, whatever it is that you plant, that's what you're going to get back. If you plant bad seed, guess what? You're going to get back bad seed. So we need to start considering our ways and realizing that when we sow, we are sowing, are you sowing into good ground? We should sow into good ground. You know, when you see your neighbor is struggling with something and you have that whatever it is that your neighbor have, bless them with it. Don't talk about it. Don't go and tell Sister Sally Sue that you're doing this. Just do it. You know, God said what you do unto others, he'll make happen for you. When you bless other people, God will bless you. 
He said, when you give unto the poor, he will be, give back to you. You understand? And when, when you're uh, thirsty, oh my God, when you're thirsty, he said, he will give you that living water. That living water is the word of God, my God. That's his spirit that's flowing up and down in you. When you begin to ask him to give him, give him his word to you. And, and plant that word in you. Let it be embedded into your heart. Oh my God, you will begin to see how good God really is. You will begin to see the little things what we consider little begin to be flourishing and begin to just open up a world of that we have never even thought of before. You know, we'll begin to understand things in a more clearer way. We will begin to just see things in a different light. If you just begin to just start drinking of that living water, just start showing God, you know, letting God love on him, letting him know that you want his power. You want his anointing. You want his, you know, his strength. You want his joy. You want his love. You want his peace. You on everything that God has to offer you. Hallelujah. And then when it says being warm, you're putting on clothes, then you'll begin to start feeling that love wrapped around you. That when you don't feel like you don't have the friends that can come and comfort you, God is there to comfort you and to keep you warm. He will keep you in perfect, perfect, perfect peace. You don't have to worry about man to come and do that for you because that's what God is there for you. Hallelujah. And when you work in that job, you will begin to start seeing things manifest, promotions coming out of nowhere, um, uh, uh, not just promotion, increase in the income, you know, uh, coming out of nowhere, bonuses coming out of nowhere. You, you just didn't think, you know, that you was going to be the one to get that position that's going to not only give you better income, but give you a more uh, power within the job and, and within yourself, you know, because believe it or not, you know, you, you say, oh, you don't want to be, you know, all, and you're not boasting. You, you're just being thankful. You're being grateful for what God has blessed you with. So when you think about it, I want you to consider your ways. When things are going accordingly, are, are, are a way that you feel that should be a little bit different in your life, consider your ways. Go to your word. Ask God, Lord, help me. Show me. What am I missing? What am I not doing? What do I need to do? What did I do that will cause me? I heard a, a sister give a testimony. She said that one night she went to bed and she just couldn't sleep. She kept tossing and turning and she got up and she was like, Lord, what is it? What is it that I, why is it that I cannot sleep? It has to be something. And the Holy Spirit just like that brought to her memory. Earlier that day, she said something to someone that actually hurt that person's feelings. And she did not apologize. She went about her business and right then and there, she repented. And she asked God to forgive her. And she said, first thing in the morning, Lord, I'm going to go to that person and ask for forgiveness. And that's what she did. She said when she did that, she said after she confessed to the Lord, she went right to sleep. When she woke up that morning, she went to that person and she asked for forgiveness. Is it something that we're going through? You know what I'm saying? Is it something that someone did to us maybe and it's bothering us? Then what we are to, to do, give it to Jesus. Let him handle it. He said he'll fight your battles for you. Amen. I want you to get this concept in your, in your mind because things are not always going to be easy if we try to do it ourselves. But if we let God take control, if we let God be the head of our life, if we let God just take it and, and guide us and direct us, we will begin to see that our ways are not our ways, but it's his ways. What the word of God says, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Let the old man in me be taken down, but let the spirit man rise up. And again, I give you praise. I give you thanks. I give you glory. I give you honor. Begin to praise and magnify him. Begin to just uh, uh, magnify him and lift him up and, and just give him the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything in your life, for the things that are seen, the things that are not seen, the things that are to come, the things that have already came. Amen. Praise him for what you know that he can do in your life. Amen. Don't just be stagnated and standing and wondering, why is it that I'm not prospering? 
Why is it that I'm not going forward in the things that God has called me to do? do? Consider your ways, he says, and look to him and begin to call upon his name. Again, thank you for listening to this broadcast with Vision Life Ministry, again, sponsored by Uneducated Network. If you have not given your life to Christ, today is your day. Just say this simple prayer with me. Lord, forgive me for I have sinned against you. I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior, and I accept you into my life. Come into my life and make me whole. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you just said that simple prayer, then you have just given your life to the Lord and your name is now written into the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord. We thank you. We glorify God. Hallelujah. We give him the praise for all things. You go forth in this wonderful, beautiful day and just remember to consider your ways because God, hallelujah, is a good God and he's there for us every step of the way, whatever it is that we may could possibly be trying to go through or what the enemy is trying to bring us through, we know that we are victorious. We know that we have the victory. Be blessed and have a wonderful week. Amen.